gamers. I am back. If you're watching on Twitch, obviously I've been streaming for a bit, but if you're watching on YouTube, I'm back home. The tournament has ended. Um, I've been not streaming for like two weeks and I've been creating or uh, uploading on YouTube videos for two, three weeks. But I'm finally back home from Germany. I actually came back today, like four or five hours ago and decided to do a short stream. So I'm back to making YouTube videos, back to streaming regularly. And I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown and what I'm gonna be doing regarding content. And then I'm gonna give you a rundown at Red Bull Wallala, like my experience, what happened and all the good stuff, right? Um, so first of all, I'm gonna be playing a lot of team games. Um, there's a $40,000 tournament coming for team games in two weeks. I think it starts at 14th of November or 19th, something like that. And I will be playing with the Muslim, uh, Marine Lord, myself, and Sarah will be uh, the team. Yes, the StarCraft 2 Sarah before anyone asks. And Sarah will be a backup in case one of us cannot play for whatever reason, like we lose power or something. Sarah will uh, jump in. Uh, we're doing that and the tournament is hosted by EGC TV and the way it's gonna work is like uh, there's gonna be a 3v3 match, then a 2v2 match, then a 3v3 match. Uh, in best of three, in best of five it's gonna be 3v3, 2v2, 3v3, 2v2, 3v3. So yeah I'm super excited for that. Uh, obviously we're gonna try to win. I think we have a really really strong team. Uh, Marine Lord, the Muslim and I should be you know uh, pretty good. Uh, the last team tournament I played, we got second place. Uh, I was also in team with the Muslims, so hopefully this time we get uh, rank one. I'm going to be creating a lot of guides. I'm going to be creating uh, guides for season three with every single sieve. I'm going to do everything you need to know about the rest of the sieves that I have not made yet. And that's pretty much it. Uh, my main focus is probably going to be team games for the next month, month and a half. Obviously, I'm still going to play one-on-ones. Um, I feel like I'm in really good shape in one-on-ones because I've been practicing a lot. Um, if you guys don't know, I, I've been two weeks before the tournament, I got kidney stones, so I was in a lot of pain, I was practicing with painkillers, so that sucked. And also, I still had kidney stones while I was at the tournament, and I had a day, um, two days where I was on painkillers, because, uh, like, I, I was literally gonna faint from pain. If you had kidney stones, you know what I mean, so... Yeah, not the perfect case scenario, I would say. Uh, having kidney stones at like the biggest tournament, but yeah, it is what it is, right? And uh, it made it very difficult and challenging to practice because my practice was basically I wake up, I drink painkillers, then I practice and then I have pain and then I lie down or take a nap uh, till the pain's over, then I wake up, practice, pain comes, I stop and so on and so forth. Anyway. Uh, also, I'll, I will try to do uh, build orders for water maps. So I know, I know a lot of you have requested that and we have water maps in the map pool. Alright, so my experience in Red Bull wall a lot. So I'm going to try to keep this sh short, Kappa. It's probably going to be like an hour and a half video, uh, as I usually do. Um, so the travel there was, you know, uh, I'll start from the get-go, was fine. I was worried about my kidney stones that they're going to start hurting in the airplane. Luckily, they didn't for the trip. They started hurting when I arrived there, which wasn't great. Uh, we arrived the first day, uh, you know, we saw some of the players, you know, talked a bit, hung out with the players a bit, uh, then went to bed the next day, which was 25th. So I arrived on 24th. 25th was uh, the media day. Uh, and it was basically, you know, us taking like pictures and, um, you know, recording those videos that you guys saw and stuff like that. So yeah, it was a media day where we were recording, uh, like taking photos and doing like uh, rundowns uh, on the thing. And they were, you know, recording us and they have those cool shots. We took the, the drone shots at the top of the castle with the, the banners. I got my banner right here. Obviously, they, uh, they gave us the, the banners. So that's pretty cool. So the one that you saw uh, at the Red Bull, I have it at home and that's probably going to be somewhere up there because I really like it. I think it's cool as fuck. So yeah, I arrived there uh, meeting a, a bunch of people. The production at the Red Bull was fucking massive. Um, like they were, there were so many people working at the, the event. Um, honestly, everyone was super nice at the event. Like, um, people like loved interacting with one another 
Um, I met Riley, uh, the the host that you guys know for the first time. Uh, I've seen his work like last year Red Bull, and also seen his work at AOE two before we arrived. He's obviously like a really, really, really good host. Um, met his girlfriend. They're both super nice, super chill. Mareka, since she traveled with me, there was a lot of plus ones, aka like girlfriends or or, or uh, wives or fiances of of the players or the staff or whatever. So she had a lot of company there as well to, you know, to not be like the only girl there or something like that. So uh, she had a blast there. She, you know, managed to, to, you know, hang out, talk with a lot of people. So I didn't feel like the need to be with her all the time or like entertain her because I didn't want her to be bored. So that worked out great. She loved it. Uh, she loved the whole event and she was like, this is a life, um, uh, once in a lifetime experience kind of thing because we played at a fucking castle. So yeah, the people were like honestly the, the, that was a great part like um, Seeing some people like from Starcraft that I haven't seen in a while was really cool uh, Seeing the the guys from N4C again was really cool um, You know just getting to it's like a bunch of nerds a bunch of gamers talking about AOE and talking about stuff all of this time was it wasn't quite as N4C, like N4C people were sharing stuff a lot more. This event was more like everyone was kind of like, you know, keeping quiet because everyone had their own practice groups. But yeah, hanging out with everyone was super, super fun. Um, I managed to uh, meet the AOE2 guys as well. So I don't know if you guys know, but a lot of the AOE2 players went home. Some of them stayed uh, on their own cost. And obviously the top four players for AOE2 stayed because, you know, they had to play. Um, I'm trying to remember which players from AOE2 did I meet. Sito, I met uh, ACCM, I met Mr. Yo, like very briefly. Um, uh, 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 like uh, Viles was there, but he doesn't really hang out with people too much. I talked a bunch with Leary, I talked with a bunch with, um, with Hera, um, talked a little bit with Tato, which, spoilers, ended up winning AOE2. Um, I met Doubt shortly, but I didn't really talk with Doubt at all. He was kind of, I don't know, seemed to be in a hurry, so I didn't really get to talk with him much. Uh, but yeah, I probably talked the most with Sito, uh, um, Hera, and uh, Leary. For those that are wondering, you know, Hera had no uh, uh, bad uh, feelings or holding a grudge because, you know, the whole <laughs> me streaming Teemo and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I had a talk with him, uh, you know, we were discussing AOE2 and AOE4, so that was pretty cool, and uh, the AOE2 guys, like, because I'm not in that scene at all, um, like, you know, I, I, I don't follow AOE2, but all the AOE2 guys, like, uh, you know, knew who I was, and they either watched my stream, or, you know, some of them watch AOE4 tournaments, which was pretty cool. Uh, because I also, you know, watch their games and stuff like that. So it's always cool when, like, players from different games uh, have mutual respect for each other. Like, uh, you know, Leary said he, when he played AOE 4 for a bit, he watched my stream um, quite a lot. So, and that's pretty cool, I think. Uh, I think whenever you have, like I said, players from different games and, and having, like, respect for each other, even, if, even though you don't play the game, I think it's pretty cool. So that was nice. Um... That was fun. Um, a lot of the staff that worked the event, I already knew them from uh, like either N4C or a while back. One of the guys working, uh, one of the main guys working the event, I actually met him in like 2011 uh, at I Am Cologne. And I was like, you worked at I Am Cologne 2011. He's like, yeah, I did. And I was like, I remember. Um, so yeah, that whole part was honestly amazing. Uh, th there was a, a problem with food the very first day. Uh, we got gluten, so that was not good. Uh, both me and Mareka, for those that don't know, both me and Mareka have celiac disease, uh, which is, it's not like, oh, gluten is so bad for you. It's like, no, my body cannot process it, and uh, it is very, very painful. So we were like, this is gluten-free, right? It's all fine. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, can, can, we, can you maybe double check? And, you know, the girl goes, double checks. And as we're eating, Mareka eats like the whole like bread thing that told us it was gluten free. And the girl is coming like, no, it stopped. It's not gluten free. And Mareka is just like, she just ate the whole thing, like like bread this size. And I'm literally chewing it. And I'm just like, 
So I just spit it out. And she's like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, fuck me. The bad thing is Marika was in a lot of pain, right? For like about an hour, hour and a half. And, and she was kind of like, her head was kind of messed up a bit the whole day because of it. The good thing is, I wasn't actually in pain from it. Because my kidneys were so in fucking pain that... that me eating gluten actually didn't hurt almost at all because kidney pain is way fucking worse so thumbs up um kidney saved the day yeah um so yeah after that it was fine uh we also like uh, you know we ate food it was fine uh we also found a bunch of places we can we can eat or order from so that was nice red bull one uh, one night took us out for a dinner which was cool like you guys will see i'm gonna post oh yeah i forgot to say this uh, i'm gonna post like a vlog maybe probably like one video of me just recording around the castle and talking and giving you guys like a little guide but you'll see like we had free snacks there at the event like some free fruit um every day we had like you know how much red bull you want uh, water, we had some like uh, yogurty things. I don't know what it is, it's, it, but it was really, uh, really nice. Um, but yeah, the, that whole experience was great. Like being there, uh, like everything was organized. We did like COVID tests every morning because we had to, because you cannot run events if like one person tests positive. So yeah. Every evening, like when we would come back, like we would go to the event at like 9, 9.30 in the morning and we would be coming back at like 11 in the evening. So we were there uh, all day. Yeah, Y food. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's called. The, the yo I mean, I don't know what it is. It's like, what? it's not a yogurt. I don't know what it is, but it's really, it, it tastes fucking good. Like not sponsored to say this. I don't know if that thing's healthy, but that, that, that thing tastes really good. Uh, like they have like six, seven different flavors and all of them are good. It's a meal. Yeah. Um, a lot of players complain about 27 inch monitor. I play on 27 inch monitor. So yeah. Um, all that like organization, uh, anything that was sorted by Red Bull was really cool. Like I said, the best part about the tournament was probably like just people and everyone was super, super nice. Like everyone's plus ones were super nice. Like there was just no like weird or, or like bad vibes at the event like everyone was just nice friendly like players were memeing on each other no one like has there's no like no players at the event got any like drama between them or bad blood or you know it was just it was just cool um i i like everyone wishes we could have like the tournament was longer so we could have like stayed longer but you know eventually it has to um uh, has to end now that's the good stuff. Uh, the bad stuff is um, the bad stuff is like it's. Mm, I don't know how to explain it, but um, basically the maps, right? Let's let's talk about gameplay. So uh, I'm also going to be analyzing my replays, not today, but at some point. Did you hang out with Riley at any stage? Yeah, we we hung out with Riley and his girlfriend quite a bit. Like every evening at a bar, we would talk with them or hang out with them, and and also his girlfriend was hanging out with Breaker quite a bit. So yeah, Riley's a really cool guy and uh, uh, Chad, and uh, he's a great host. Like he he does his job like ten out of ten. Um, he's like straight to the point, and and he. I think he and I told him it's like he he asks great questions and knows when to like push for more and when to stop regarding questions and stuff so yeah so yeah um the maps it was problematic so I've seen some of the comments from people on like forums the maps were not uh, or the games were not great um and the reason the games were not great, I'll give you guys the this behind this, the, the 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 scene stories. Uh, basically, Red Bull runs tournaments uh, in a specific way, which obviously I only found out this year because this is the first day before event. But um, the games were meant to be fast, so uh, AOE two, for example, and this is the only format and the only tournament that's run with this format is they actually start in age two. Um, 
so they don't have Dark Age in AoE 2. They start with Infutal, and it's like the games end in like 7-8 minutes. So the reason why this is done is because when they rent out a castle, they have to leave at a certain point. So I think we could have only stayed at the castle till 11. So they were very worried that the games would drag out and last too long. So they had the same thought process for AoE 4. Um, and yeah. So going into the tournament, uh, the maps that were picked were maps that were supposed to have a lot shorter games. Uh, and it was basically supposed to be like pop, 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 and you're out. And I can count on my hands how many Imperial games we had in the whole tournament. It was very few games that reached Imperial. Uh, because the maps were very aggressive, very open, and yeah. So... Again, I understand from their point of view, like they didn't do it to screw over AoE 4 and anything like that. I understand it from their point of view. I think it's great that they had AoE 4, so I'm not like hating on Red Bull. I get it. Uh, some AoE 4 games can last a long time. Like we've had best of sevens or best of fives in AoE 4 that lasted four hours. And with six best of fives being played in one day in, in you know, um, quarterfinals, uh, obviously you can't. Or four best of five, sorry. Obviously, you can have four hour best of fives. So, um, I think that right now, AoE 4 in it is in its best state, balance wise and gameplay wise. Um, I think gameplay right now in AoE 4 is great. I feel every Civ has its own personality. Malians are probably underpowered, but every other Civ I think plays really nicely. Every Civ has its own role. Uh, I think that's great. The sad thing for AoE 4 is I feel like the games were pretty average at the tournament from fun point of view. Not skill point of view, I think the skill was peak we've ever had. Um, but from maybe spectator point of view, the games were a bit underwhelming. And uh, this is something that the players notice at the event and this is something that I've seen people say online as well. Um, like I've enjoyed the event of Fuck Done, but that is something that did happen because of the maps and because of the, like I said, time limitations we had. So, uh, you know, players were not told like you got all in, but the maps were so open that uh, many players just did all ins and stuff like that too, uh, because that was the best way to play. And I feel like in a way it kind of sucks for AoE 4 because I think peak AoE 4 games were like the uh, the one that uh, two games come to mind that in my opinion were one of the best games I know there's more but two games that come to mind for me was um, uh, Mediterranean uh, 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 The Muslim versus Kaposh I thought was great and Maybe I'm biased, but uh, a me versus Marine Lord or Four Lakes was also a really good game and I think a lot of people like that game and I think those two games are what AoE 4 is, right? I think those two games represent AoE 4. And because of the maps, we did not get to see more of those games. And I think that's sad for... Like, I feel sad because we didn't have more of those games. Because that's what AoE 4 is all about, right? That's AoE 4. And those games were cool as fuck. But sadly, a lot of the games were like all in. One guy gets a good engagement and the other guy taps out. Um, yeah, Vortex versus me in the Mediterranean. I thought that was an okay game. I don't know if they caught a lot of the harassment, but that was like in, like crazy aggression everywhere. So, yeah. Um, like I said, a, a bit sad from that point of view, but, you know, th that's it. Like. They, they run out of schedule, run on schedule, so I get it from their point of view, but from my point of view as a fan of A4, kind of meh. What else did I want to say? Um, 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 like I said, I'm going to go through the games uh, in another video, so I'm not going to talk about the game, uh, the games themselves, themselves too much. And obviously I didn't watch every single game, maybe I missed some games, so if someone was like, oh, this game was really cool, uh, you know, maybe I just missed it, so... Yeah, I'm talking just from the games that uh, I have personally uh, seen. Yeah, the observing was great. Um, like Mapu was observing from StarCraft 2. I don't know if you guys know. So yeah, I think he did a great job. Uh, the funny thing is, 
from the people uh so there were a lot of developers at the event i don't know if you guys are aware of that but they were like crapped on of aoe2 developers a4 developers there were uh people from forgotten empires microsoft relic like a lot a lot of those people so the funny thing is um a we I talk with like AOE four developers to talk with AOE two developers and AOE two developers told me and a lot of AOE two uh, fans and a lot of AOE two uh, commentators and players told me like uh, uh, you know they didn't like AOE four in release but the games that I've seen uh, they liked it quite a bit like the more aggressive approach and they asked me like is that how AOE four is right now and I said yeah like. Uh, I told them that some of the games are, are, are longer, like my game versus Brindle and Four Lakes. But I think the meta right now, you guys might be surprised. Um, but the meta in AOE 4 is a lot more aggressive. Uh, the meta has developed quite a bit in the month that all the pro players were away. So people do play a lot more aggressive, but usually on more uh, normal maps, the games will be uh, a, a bit longer on the average. So now the funniest thing is when I talked to the AOE2 guys and developers, they were like, oh, that, you know, because I talk with them, right? So maybe they, they like some other games, but they were like, man, that Marine Lord versus you game on Four Lakes was so cool. Is that what AOE4 is like? And then I told them the story I just told you guys where yes, a lot of the games are like that, but due to maps and stuff like that, we couldn't have a lot of those games. Uh, but yeah, they, they were like, oh, it was so back and forth. It was like, he pushes you and then you push back and then he pushes again. And I was like, yeah, that's a 4 But uh, like I said, the maps made it the way it was, but uh, either way, it was, um, it was really, really, um, Cool. So uh, I'm not going to name names because I don't want to put anyone on like the spot. But a lot of the AOE2 players that were competing there said that they might give AOE4 another chance. Like to play it again. Uh, because they like the, the fact, you know, they, they asked me some questions about it. And they like the fact that you reach feudal and it's like, you know, insta-stable. You're insta-running across the map with one horseman and you're instantly harassing. And um, like... The, uh, the meta kind of... People don't go second TC instantly anymore. So be, uh, before this last patch, you would instantly go second TC and then aggression. Now you, you kind of take a lot of damage. So uh, now you kind of have to open aggression into second TC. So the game is a lot more proactive. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's the one thing I feel uh, bad about because um, AOE4 had a lot of eyes on it and I wish that we had more of those back and forth long games. But overall, uh, from what I've seen, when I've talked to people, I think a lot of people that were not in AOE4 scene did enjoy the games and might be changing their opinion on um, AOE4 and maybe they're giving it a try. So, yeah, like I've had a lot of conversations where people were from AOE2 were genuinely curious about AOE4 and they were asking me a bunch of questions regarding gameplay and, and stuff like that. So, um, that's really cool, right? Um, I think that's always great uh, whenever we get to have more, more people. Regarding the viewership numbers, uh, I thought the viewership numbers were pretty good. Uh, they were at least on Twitch on mainstream. I don't know where exactly it was streamed like maybe YouTube um, YouTube had different numbers. I don't know but uh, for example AOE 2 and 4 I think first two, ga two days had like almost same uh, Almost the same viewership numbers like maybe AOE 4 had like thousand average less which I thought was great numbers for us Um in the finals, I think on Twitch alone, AoE4 had like 33,000 viewers. Uh, I'm not sure how much there was for uh, semifinals, but I thought that number was good. And yeah, uh, so there was AoE1, AoE2, and AoE4. And if you guys don't know, AoE1 had the most viewership by far. By like all uh, probably double or maybe even more um, 
because in Vietnam, apparently, like, AOE 1 is, like, insanely popular. So, yeah, AOE 1 had the most viewership by far. So, a really cool story I want to tell you guys. So, um, on, like, day 4 or 5, ACCM, the AOE 2 Pro, comes up to me and he's like, Hey, Beastie, can I ask you something? I'm like, of course. He's like, uh, is it... Uh, these two guys want to say hi to you and I didn't know who they were because like, I don't know I don't follow AOE 1 but it was the AOE 2 uh, AOE 1 sorry players the top two players from AOE 1 um, and the guy that won the AOE 1 tournament the best player in AOE 1 um, you know he was saying stuff to ACCM and ACCM was translating to me and then I was saying it to ACCM and he was translating to him but he was like, uh, hi, I just wanted to say hi. Uh, he's like, I'm a big fan. I watch your stream all the time. Uh, and he's like, if for me, you will always be the best AOE4 player. You know, you're so fast. And I was like, thank you so much. And and then they have told me, uh, she's like, I don't know if you know, but they're like celebrities in Vietnam. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, really? That's pretty cool. And he's like, yeah, he has over a million followers on Facebook. And I was like, the fuck? So I checked after, my gamer has 1.3 million followers on Facebook. Like this guy's getting over 50,000 live viewers whenever he streams. And I was like, holy fuck. So anyway, like obviously, you know, we exchanged, you know, words. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching a one and I hope you do great and stuff like that. Well, he actually clapped. He won 3-0 in the finals. So he clapped the other guy. Um, but yeah, it, it's funny because it's like, and ACCM later told me like, he's like, it's so funny that he's like a fan of yours, but he's like way more popular than all of us combined here. And I was like, yeah, that's fucking crazy. Because he, he has like more followers than all of us at the event. Like legit. So, so yeah, that was pretty cool. And, you know, I go back to like talking with Leary and stuff like that, like the other AV2 guys, where it's like, it's just like mutual respect, you know, between the, the players. It doesn't matter what game you come from. Like, uh, you always should respect, I think, the, the other players, whether you're potato and a potato or pro player and pro, pro player, because it doesn't matter what game you play. It's extremely hard to be the best or one of the best. So, um, yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, uh, ACCM actually told me that in Vietnam, actually, government organizes tournaments for AOE 1. Like, that's how big AOE 1 is there. Like, to give you guys a perspective. Yeah, like, Vietnam has, like, a following of, like, 5, 6 million for AOE 1. And Vietnam has, like, 100 million people living there. Yeah, it's like Korea for uh, Brood War. So, that's pretty crazy. Um, so, that was also a cool interaction. Uh, um... You know, uh, obviously Nilly was there, uh, KP was there, Killer Pigeon, Ozzy Drongo, Ozzy Drongo I've met before, uh, Killer Pigeon I met just now, he's a super nice guy, uh, managed to talk a lot with him, uh, talked some with, obviously, you know, Nilly, I met him before, I met Memb from AoE2, uh, I met T90, T90 I didn't actually get to chat too much, you know, he just, when we were sitting in lobby, he just came, came over and, uh, like, the table that I was sitting at is like, hey, uh, you're beast, right? I said, yeah, he's like, so nice to meet you, I'm T90. You know, we just exchanged a couple of words. Um, so I didn't get to talk to him too much, sadly. You know, wish I got the chance to talk to him more. Uh, if you guys don't know who T90 is, he's basically like Aussie Drongo level of, he's like that, the, the biggest YouTuber for AOE2. Uh, yeah, Mem TV was like a super, super chill guy. I managed to talk with him quite a bit. Also the, the video that I recorded, the Gastel, he's also in the video. But yeah, he's a super like chill guy and he was also like asking questions about AOE4. Um, you know, just being curious and, and like asking like, okay, you know, we would be watching and we're like, oh, this guy's dead. He's like, oh, why is he dead? Like, can you guys give me some info, you know? Uh, so, yeah. Um, one thing I do want to say, uh, I think this, this like, hate or, or jealousy or just, like, this dick measuring contest between AOE2 and AOE4 communities from both sides is extremely cringe and bad for both communities. Uh, like, people need to understand that 
both sides have cringe fans and people should stop comparing the games like I, I can tell you guys I was at the event and you feel free to ask any of the players from AA4 or AA2 um, like the players and the casters respect both games equally so I don't understand why your average Joe watching AA2 or AA4 should be upset at the other game like I was watching AA2 games with Leary I was watching AA4 games with Hera I'm sure other AA4 guys interacted, like, I was, like, you know what I mean? If the players are getting along and the casters are getting along and the casters from AOE2 want to know more about AOE4 and the AOE4 casters want to know more about AOE2 and everyone's treating each other with respect, I don't understand why the fans have to be, like, obnoxious about this. Like, there's no need. And, like, there's, there's no need. Like, what a lot of people don't realize, uh, if AoE 2 or AoE 4 succeeds, the other game will be more inclined to also have a tournament at the same event. So, there's no reason to white knight the one game or the other. Like, there's no reason to call AoE 4 a shit game because it's new and it's not AoE 2. It is not AoE 2, it's AoE 4. And there's also no reason for AOE4 fans to call AOE2 ga two, uh, like, uh, fans names or, or call it like, why would you play that? It's an old game. Let people play whatever they want. Like, if they, if they like to play it, let them play it. Like, you know, different strokes for different folks, right? So, yeah. It, it, it's funny because, like, looking at, at like, communities bickering at each other and then looking at all the pro players hanging out with one another and like the communities and hosts and, and casters getting along super well is just weird you know uh and at the end of the day if you don't like AOE 4 or you don't like AOE 2 that's fine but there's no need to to trash talk one another right um like RTS is not the most popular genre, so we should work on like growing both instead of like trying to put the other one down. Like before AOE2 started, AOE2 semifinals and finals, like I tweeted, or and AOE2, AOE1 2 as well. I tweeted like, you know, I'm super excited to watch the games and everyone should tune in. Obviously my audience is AOE4, so I think that this is something that everyone should do and promote. Um, because like I said, success of one will boost success of the other uh, for various reasons. So, yeah. Regarding the whole event, you know what's funny? I was nervous at one point uh, for the games and it was actually my first series I was nervous. I was legit nervous. Like, I guess because this was the first game of the tournament and I was worried that I'm gonna get surprised by Recon. I don't know if you guys know, but this is what Recon told me. Uh, apparently, in the, like the last six months, he won one game against me, like one game, not series. And I didn't know this until he told me. And then brackets got announced, and I saw that I'm playing against him. So I felt super confident playing against him because I knew that he will have a massive uh, uh, mental block. Um, yeah, I was nervous for the first game, but my first game against him went pretty well. Then second game was like super one-sided. I managed to win 2-0. Uh, then I played against Vortex on stage. Um, I, I threw the game one against Vortex quite badly, uh, which I was not really happy about. And then I won the next two. So I advanced to quarterfinals. In the quarterfinals, it was a 50% chance if I'm going to play Marine Lord or Lenok. I ended up playing Lenok. Which I don't know if you guys know, but I'm like 7-0 and zero in tournaments against him. So again, I felt super confident that I managed to win 3-1. For those who don't know, spoilers, Marine Lord lost his first round match. So he actually fucked the bracket really hard. He was supposed to be on the other side of the bracket from where I was. But because he lost the match, he went 2-1 and I went 2-0. He ended up being on my side of the bracket. I ended up losing in the semifinals to, to Marine Lord 3-1. And then in the finals, he managed to um, beat Mr. 4-0. Um, now, 
regarding my series against Marine Lord, uh, I'm probably, like I said, going to analyze it. I just want to give you my, like, my point of view from mental side, I guess. I was feeling pretty good um, against him. I thought that his games all tournament were really like shaky, especially in troop stages. They were like, he almost dropped out uh, twice against Wham. I think Wham also did not play his greatest. And I think Wham uh, almost beat Marine Lord 2-0 and that Marine Lord would have dropped out first in the tournament. But Mar uh, I think Wham was really, really nervous because I practiced with Wham quite a lot and uh, he was a lot better than what he has shown. And I think, I mean, even Mariner said, like, he played really bad in the group stages. So, you know, I, I always say this. It's like another day you would have another result or different results. And if Wham played, like, 10% better in first game that he played against Marine Lord in Delhi versus Ottoman, I think Marine Lord would have lost at 2-0 and he would have been out of the tournament, right? Which is kind of crazy to think about considering he won the tournament now, but that was a real possibility. And uh, then... Marine Lord went to play on against the Muslim, which was also a super close series. Uh, but, you know, he managed to get into the, the playoffs. So, yeah. So, I, I didn't feel, like, nervous or, like, worried playing against Marine Lord. Because two weeks before the event, uh, there was that tournament by Ozzy Drongo. And I beat Marine Lord 2-0 there. We did some practice games uh, against Marine Lord that I did pretty well in. So... I was feeling fine, especially because his game kind of looked weird uh, or sloppy, whatever you want to call them, in, in group stage. So I felt pretty good. Uh, he beat Poppy Paw 3-0, but uh, I do think that Poppy Paw, uh, I don't know if it was the nerves. Um, I don't know if it was the nerves or what, but uh, I feel like Poppy Paw also didn't play his best. If you guys watch the tournament, uh, Poppy Po in group stage was like absolutely on point, and then Poppy Po in playoffs was not on point to say the least. Um, so, yeah, and th there was a lot of that. There was a lot of like, you know, someone was playing like terrible in group stage and then popped off in playoffs or played really well in playoffs and then just fell apart in the tournament. Um, I didn't mind playing on stage, I, I thought it was cool, I uh, wasn't really nervous, so when I ended up playing against Marine Lord, I like could not focus on my games, and the reason for that is, uh, by the way, I just want to say this because I know that you know there's people out there that are going to say I'm making excuses, I am not, Marine Lord was 100% the best player at the tournament, he deserved to win. Um, Skill wise, I think he was he was the best player, and especially playing semifinals and finals, he was like on point. Um, I think Marine Lord that like that time when I played Marine Lord was probably the most on point he has played, uh, like in the in the history of AA4. Like his his harassment was on point, uh, all his movements were on point. So yeah, I think he played I think he played really well. So we did the live drafts. Um, so a couple of things did not go my way, um, which is not, not maybe why I lost, but didn't help. So number one is I actually did not do any practice for best of five drafts. I was solely focused on best of three drafts because I, I thought that best of five drafts would not be that different. And apparently Marine Lord's whole practice was best of five drafts. He was only practicing best of five drafts, which also might have explained why his best of threes were bad and why my best of threes were good. So when it came down to best of fives, I think he had way more experience than anyone else drafting best of fives. Um, when we did the live drafting, I kid you not, and this is 100% on me, I thought the map pool for me and Marine Lord... So, if you guys don't know, the, the drafting was done live, like in front of that big board. So, you know, I would ban a save, then he would ban a save, then I would ban a map. He bans a map, I pick, he picks. So, you can't hear Marine Lord on the other side. Like, the crowd is insane, the casters are talking, right? You can't hear him. So, there was a guy behind me telling me what map it was. So, as I was thinking... So we were picking the maps, and the, I can't remember the exact order, but I knew the map pool was, the last map was Gorge, uh, I know that. And then the maps were, I picked Mediterranean, he picked Boulder Bay, 
Uh, there, I picked Prairie, and the last map, I swear, I, I thought he picked Cauldron, but he banned Cauldron. The last map was Four Legs, but I thought it was Cauldron. So if you look at my draft, you'll see something weird, and that's that I picked Mongol twice. The reason I picked Mongol twice is because I thought the map pool was Cauldron, uh, Prairie, Mediterranean, Boulder, Ben Gorge. And I wanted to play Mongol on Prairie and Cauldron. So then we did the drafts and I sat down on my computer and, and something just like bothered me. So I asked the admin, I was like, and I can show you this guys if you want, like if anyone like thinks that I'm lying or something. I asked, just to double check, is the map pool Boulder Bay, Mediterranean, uh, Gorge, Cauldron and Prairie? And he said, there's no Cauldron, it's four lakes. And I was like, Oh God. And from that point, I could not focus for shit because I was like, oh, I fucked the draft so hard. And I just kept like, my mind was just completely focused on the fact that I just fucked the draft so bad. And I felt so stupid because drafting is like the easier part than to play the game. And I was like, oh God. And the whole series, I was just like, fuck me. Why did I, why did I not ask there? Like, why did I? You know, and I just kept thinking like, fuck, what am I going to do? So my sieve picks uh, were, so this was the, the map pool, right? So I thought the four legs was cauldron for whatever reason. So when we went into, because um, again, we didn't do the drafts on computer, we did them live. So when we pick the sieves, if you look at the sieves, right? I banned English, he banned English, I banned China, he banned China. The reason why English and China were banned, by the way, is because they were really good on water. Um, and they were really good on land, so they were kind of uh, uh, best of both worlds, I guess. So, this is how the draft went, right? I pick a tree, he picks a tree. I pick Delhi for Gorge. And then he picks Ottomans. I pick Mongol for um, Cauldron, and then he picks Abbasid, and I'm like, Mongol again, because I was like, I got Mongol for a Prairie, ain't fucking Cauldron, like we're good, you know, because Mongol's really strong in those maps. And then I pick Rus for uh, like Mediterranean or Boulder Bay, because I can play Atrium, Mediterranean or Boulder Bay. So I was like, I got my picks, like I'll play Delian Gorge, Atria and Boulder Bay or Mediterranean and I'll play Rus or Mediterranean and thing. So then we did we finished the drafts. I picked Ottomans last and we went back to this to the stage and that's when I sat down and asked what was the map pool and I was like fuck. Because if you go back to the draft, if I play uh, I played Rus on Boulder Bay, if I play Atria on Four Lakes, what am I going to play in Mediterranean? Mind you, I did not play Ottoman once in water. And that that completely fucked me in the head. Because I kept thinking like, fuck, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So then, in the mix of that, even though I have planned to do Mongol on Prairie, I was like, fuck, do I, do I now pick Mongol on, Pr on Gorge? Do I pick Delhi? Do I like switch it? And even though I practice Delhi on Gorge, uh, and I practice Mongol on Prairie, I decided to go with Mongol on Gorge, and I got the matchup I did not want, and I would actually love if I got Delhi versus Ottoman. And then the the, the tower rushing was terrible. I tower rushed the gold for whatever reason instead of stone and wood, which is what you normally do. So I was just like, "Fuck!" And then game two, I picked Boulder Bay, and it was the Rus strat I prepared. Uh, it worked out great. I won in like six minutes. And then he picked Four Lakes, and I felt pretty good about that. Like, my Holy Roman Empire on Four Lakes was, uh, yeah, it's something I've been playing for a while. And then what ended up happening, like, my build was going great. So I'm like, I'm going to dock his side, and I scout, and I'm like, you know, a wall. And uh, so I go to place a dock and my villagers ahead from his villager and I'm like, I'm about to dock that bitch and I'm gonna get three lakes. And you know what happened? 
His whole fucking lake was undockable. Yep. And that... So these were seeded maps, by the way. Um, and whoever picked the seeds, you, my brother, have no fucking clue anything about the game. Because I think you can be Bob Joe, a beastie marine lord, Mista. You know that the most important thing on Four Lakes is dock positions. And yeah, his whole lake was not dockable. The only place where I could have placed the dock was under his dock, which he put a tiny wall and I was fucked. So again, by the way, I'm just going to say this again because I know a lot of people are going to be like, Oh, he's blaming RNG. No, nope, Marine Lord deserved to win 100%. I think he was the best player in the tournament, but it sucks. Uh, it sucks that that happened because you guys know four lakes. If someone controls three of the lakes, you just have such a massive advantage. Or if I had two lakes and then um, I contest third, that is a massive advantage um, for the player that has three lakes. Um, so that sucked, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it was very back and forth, and later, I think Vortex Lysron told me I could have won that game when I did the counterattack. Uh, I could have pushed through, but I went back, I went to Imperial, and the game just kind of went downhill from there. Um, but yeah, um, I don't think Four Lakes is a terrible map for competitive tournaments. I think it's probably the hardest map to, um... Hardest map to play because there's so much action. But, uh, yeah, I saw that some people said that my Delhi spawn was really bad in the last game. I honestly didn't pay too much attention. Like, I was so far gone after that four lakes game because I thought I was going to win. And then I didn't. And then the dock thing. And I was just... I wasn't tilted. I was just like, fuck, this is like... And then I was like, do I pick Mongol? And for some reason, again, I picked Delhi on Prairie, which I played like twice. And I was like, fuck... And yeah, it was like game one and four were really bad for me. Like it was really poor decision making and really uh, bad picks. Yeah, so, yeah. Then after people told me like when I lost, uh, the play the the players told me like that my berries were like fucking far away from me, which I didn't even notice during the game. That's how far like gone I was in in my own world of like not being able to focus. Um, but. A lot of the seeds were terrible. Like, a lot of the seeds were terrible. Terrible, terrible seeds. Um, like, really bad. Uh, there was a couple of more seeds that I remember that were, like, extremely unfair. Um, one of them was Poppypo versus Marine Lord. Um, basically, it was on Mediterranean, and Marine Lord's dock was, like, right there next to his TC. And Papipo's dock was the farthest I've seen ever on Mediterranean spawn. It was so far away from, from his main base. It was insane. Um, the Muslim without stone with Mongol versus Marine Lord. Oh yeah, the Muslim. Yeah, like again, Marine Lord had some fucking good spawns. Uh, yeah, Marine Lord versus the Muslim. The Muslim had three stones next to each other. And Marine Lord destroyed it. And then the Muslim had no stone. Um, there was another game that I noticed, and by the way, I'm sure I had some really good seeds, right? So, if someone's like, your seed was really good on this map, I'm sure there was seeds that were good for me. So I'm not just saying, like, Marine Lord had good seeds, no one else did. I'm saying the seeds were bad. Um, Marine Lord versus Lenok in, uh, sorry, Marine Lord versus Mista, Mongol versus Mongol on Prairie. I have never seen this before, but Marine Lord had two sacred sites next to each other, next to his base. And he had a boar next to his base. And Mista's boar was like fuck far away. The seating was awful at the event. Like, if I have to name something that was bad at the event, it was the seeds. It, it, it was so bad that I think every player would have preferred if we just had random seeds. Because... These were like, it almost felt like the seeds were purposely chosen to be scuffed. Uh, like, 
for the games to like end quicker or something like it was terrible seeds terrible terrible seeds um yeah picking good seeds is better with random than picking bad yeah that's the thing i would rather have bad seeds with random spawns than bad seeds with pick seeds yeah and again guys i i know i used like four examples from marine lords games i'm not saying he had like only good spawns and no bad spawns but there was a lot of seeds that were straight up awful yeah i i legit i i don't know who picked the seeds by the way um but legit i think that the, uh a per, no one that plays aoe4 check those seeds because I cannot imagine a person who plays AOE4 thought those seeds were okay. There was one with two out of three sacred sites inside one person's base. Yeah, that was Marine Lord versus uh, uh, Mist in the finals. Did you hear the crowd cheering? I mean, you heard like yelling, right? But you didn't hear like what they were saying or whatever. But Tito checks the seeds. Okay, well, the, the seeds were terrible. Like, they can ask any player this. Seeds were awful. Guys, to, to, to give you a perspective of how seeding should be done, at N4C, they did such a good job that we had specific seeds for Mongol versus Mongol. Because if Mongol versus Mongol, one player has gold next to the wood line and the other doesn't, it's like game ending at a high level. That's how bad it is. So at N4C, we had seeds that both spawns had gold next to the wood line so that both players get an equal spawn, like fair spawn. So at N4C, the seeding was like really, really good. Mista's performance. I mean, Mista, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but Mista doesn't play all the sieves. He plays like four to six sieves, but he prepared strategies per map really well and he executed them well. So. Yeah, like I think he played his games really well. Oh yeah, another thing. Oh god. Oh god. So let me tell you a bit of drama, okay? Which didn't happen at the event technically. It happened during the event. Uh Lunatics were back in full power and uh people tried to disqualify me during the tournament. I was reported to the admins. People tried to get Red Bull to take a cut of my prize money for bug abusing. You know, the usual. The usual. So, they, they, like, they were like hawks looking at my games to try and get me banned for something because of, you know, because, you know, I own the whole world, so I have say in everything, right? So there was like five example use used of like me breaking the rules and just to explain how stupid these people are. Are you ready? So there was a rule in the tournament, okay, that you cannot kill boars with Muslim sieves because it would cause the boar to despawn. Now, you're not allowed to do this offensively. So for example, uh me and Marine Lord played a game on Boulder Bay. So I was Rus, he was Abbasid. So Marine Lord is not allowed to come to my side and grief my boar. Okay, he's not allowed to kill the boar because it would despawn. But if uh, the boar gets pulled in the middle of the fight or, or the boar is being pulled onto your villagers at your side of the map or on your army or something, you were allowed to kill it, right? So what happened in my game against Marine Lord his bo uh, boar on his side spawned next to his gold. So I was pulling the boar onto his villagers and idiots reported me for abusing the rules because Marine Lord cannot kill the boar. So I was abusing the rules because he couldn't kill it. So I was like playing fishy or something. And I was just like, man, these people are just... By the way, for the dumbasses that tried to get me disqualified, it is allowed to kill the boar defensively. So, 
Thank you very much. They were upset you found a loophole in the rules. It is not a loophole. You cannot call it a loophole. You are completely allowed to kill the boar defensively. You were 100% allowed to kill the boar defensively. But this is the problem. The people that are trying to like get get me, you know, they don't know what they're talking about, right? So they, I got reported for that, for example, uh, and they try to disqualify me. So I think a lot of people don't understand. Um, like, for I'll, I'll give you guys an example. Wall scanning is banned, right? Wall scanning is banned. So if you wall scan on purpose, you will get disqualified or punished. If you try to make a wall and units pass in the middle of the game, the admin is not going to come over and be like, you're disqualified. So there's a difference between actively doing something and accidentally doing something, right? But yeah, in the perfect world, we wouldn't need these extra rules because the game would be fixed. But you know, it is what it is. Um, do you think you could have done something more uh, slash different in the semis? I mean, I think my draft was really bad. Uh, I, I think I did a bad job drafting. I mean, it starts with the cauldron thing, but I think my drafting was pretty bad. Um, I think first game I could have picked Delhi instead of Mongol. I could have tower rushed better in first game. Uh, third game, I, I could have won, but I didn't. And then if I win four legs game, it's 2-1 for me. And then, you know, it's completely different. Right, so who knows, right? It's hard to say. Like I said, I think Marino played really well. Like, uh, I mean, he knows this, like he said it himself at the event, and I know he's in the chat, but he played like shit in group stage, and I think in playoffs he really like, you know, played his games, uh, and, you know, played it really well. So, yeah. What's wrong with despawning the boar? Well, this is one of the rules that a lot of players were kind of... Uh... The thing is, uh, in normal games, even before this tournament, no one really, like, tried to despawn the enemy boar at any point. Like, I don't remember any tournaments before this where some Abbasid or Delhi player actively griefed the enemy boar and despawned it. Like, I literally don't remember a single instance of that. So making that a rule was kind of weird in my opinion but at the same time the boar should not despawn when killed it should just not be uh, the, the muslim saves should just not be able to gather from it and this is something i brought up with the devs and hopefully they uh they fix it yeah you should be able to kill it but it should not be deleted i think we can all agree on that oh yeah the five out of ten meme yeah that's a funny one so okay so let me let me clear this up so i don't know why the fuck they did the rankings right i don't know if there's a link for all the rankings somewhere like uh before every game every player had like macro micro strategy speed and something else ranking right and all the players were like kind of keckling at it because you know like guys there's one player with 10 speed in the whole tournament, okay? There's one player that is faster than any player by good margin. You know who that player is? It's Lenok. Lenok had nine on speed. What? Lucifron? Bro, Lucifron? You know what's funny? Vortex is faster than Lucifron, and Vortex had like 6 on speed, and Lucifron had 10. Like, both Vortex and Lucifron were like laughing at it, because Vortex is faster than Lucifron. I had 5 out of 10 speed, which put me 3rd slowest player at the event. Like, guys, ignore the APM bar I got on the side, right? Let's, let's say it doesn't work. Let's say it doesn't work, the APM bar. Let's say it's completely fucked. 
Do you think I'm third slowest player in top 16? Like, you guys watch my stream. Do you think I'm the third slowest player? What? I literally out multitask most people in the tournament. No, I don't I don't think me and Marine Lord are top two. I think this is my personal, right? I'm not gonna rank every player. I think Linok is 10 out of 10 on speed. I don't think anyone is a 10 on speed except Linok. I think Marine Lord is probably like I would say uh, uh, maybe like, uh, um, let me try to think who else was there. I can't, I don't know every single player, so I'm probably gonna miss some. But like Marine Lord Vortex are probably nines or something like that. I would say I'm probably seven or eight, seven point seven, seven point five, eight on speed. I think that's fine. Recon, by the way, does play slow. Just so you guys know, I'm probably like seven, seven point five, eight on speed. But five? Give me a break. Give me a break. I can't, uh, yeah, and the way they did it was super fucking weird, by the way. Apparently what they did is like, they took the last three ladder games from AOE4 World, and then they averaged APM, and they somehow got the speed from there. And basically what happened is like, if you played your last three China games because you're just sitting in your base booming, sucks for you, bro. You know? And I think Sort of was laughing because his like three latest games were like he played civs that were multitasking, so he got like a nine on speed or something or eight. And also Lucifer had three of his latest games where he played really fast because of the matchup and they gave him a 10. So like, the speed part was kind of dumb, I'll be honest. It just did not make sense. The way it was done, it did not make sense. Also, another thing is like, so from the, from the numbers they showed us, like, I had an average of like 230 APM, but 210 effective APM. And then you had a player that had 400 APM, but 200 effective APM, so less effective, effective APM than me, and they got a 9 on speed. And it's like... What? How does that make sense? Like, they're just literally spamming buttons, right? So, it, it made no fucking sense. And we told them, like, it makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, look at... Guys, just look at my game against Vortex on Mediterranean. Like, give me a break, you know? I was literally... I had four unit... Or three or four unit control groups. Micring two different land sides. Micring water and macroing both land and water. Yeah. So that was kind of dumb. Then I can't remember what were the other uh, marks. It was micro. Micro, macro, strategy, and experience. Yeah, I, for experience, a lot of the SC2 guys got like 9 or 10. Discord? Okay, I'll check. Yeah, for the strategy part, I mean, strategy part I think is probably the easiest. Experience part, I think, basically, if you were a pro player for the past 10 years, it's like, you have experience 9 or 10, right? That makes sense. Like, every player who had no land experience had, like, between 3 and 5, which makes sense. And like I said, experience is the part where it's, like, easy to pinpoint, right? It's not like someone had never attended a land and they gave him a 9, right? Uh, strategy, 9 for me. I mean, I think that's fine. I, I don't think I'm necessarily a 10. I don't think my strategy in-game is like a 10. It's usually the planning like overall that I think I have pretty good, but I think 9 of strategy is, is, um, is fine. Macro 10, I think that's fair. And then micro 9, I think that's also fair. Uh, yeah, Mist, yeah, Mist is an example of 10 strat. I agree with that. Like, I think my macro is probably my best uh, skill out of this, whatever you want to call it. I don't think my... I think my micro late game is probably one of the best. But I think, like, someone like Marine Lord has uh, also really good micro in the late game, but I think his micro early in the game is better. So I think Marine Lord got 10 on micro, which I think makes sense. Um, so, like, other than the speed part, like, I, I agree with the rest of it. Um, 
the speed part was a meme, I think, for all the players. Yeah, I mean, I also think that... Uh, I also think that... I think Marine Lord now is obviously the best, right? Until the next tournament. Like I always say, like whoever wins the best, the, the last tournament is the best player. Like that's what tournaments are for. And if you win a tournament, you're the best player. I think M4C bracket and group structure was better. Yeah, I agree so too. It was also more fun to play the groups, like playing more matches. But um, again, the reason why um, we had to play the system the way we played it is because of time limitation like we couldn't do five best of fives you know per player because we wouldn't have time can I buy your player card as an NFT dude I wish they kind of printed these cards that'd be kind of cool right you know what I mean? Like, just like playing cards? That'd be kind of cool. I don't know why they, do, they don't do that. That's actually a sick idea, isn't it? Trend YouTube beast is for Marine Lord. <laughs> Kick. Alright. Obviously this is a... Or obviously, I don't know if you guys are aware, but this is a YouTube video I was recording. I know it's long, but, you know, there was a crap ton to talk about, so... Not bad. Video is an hour an hour and 20 minutes i mean i think that's fine considering how big the event was right so yeah anyway for gamers on twitch we're gonna keep going for everyone on uh youtube i do want to thank you guys so much for watching again i am back on twitch back on youtube and i'll be streaming actively once again yes there will be guides for every sieve yes there will be more videos Yes, there's gonna be more team content with M Lord and the Muslim. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks so much for watching. If you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.